Yeah, hey, it's Phil coming back at you, man. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'm definitely appreciating you. Yeah, let's get back into our 204. I'll show you how to do some work to the direct drum. All right, we're going to take some crucial measurements. I'll show you why they're actually crucial. Yeah, kind of super important. We'll also resurface the uh, outside of it. I'll show you again why and how to actually do that. You don't want to do it too much because that's not cool. That's going to be bad. Uh, we'll also show a little bit about why using a wide band and the difference between using the stock one. We're also going to replace our bushings, but not only replace the bushings, I'm actually going to show you how to change to a different style bushing and why that's important and why I think you should do it. It's a really uh, cheap upgrade. So again, Again, look over my shoulder, man. It's going to be good. Let's hang out. When we're inspecting our direct drum, uh, what you want to do is look at the little tangs right here. Uh, you don't want to see uh, too much wear there. Um, what happens is that that fits into the sun shell and takes a, a beating over time. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of wear marks on the, this one right here. Uh, Initially, that's nice and flat, but there's a little uh, wear groove. This one is not in uh, bad shape at all, but sometimes you'll see uh, a giant uh, gap that's missing from here. In that case, either you want to TIG weld it and smooth it down or uh, find the replacement. Obviously, these are not uh, made in the aftermarket, so again, finding a new direct drum uh, means finding a donor transmission, so not a good thing. Also, you want to check uh, this surface right here. This surface should be uh, nice and smooth. Uh, you want to check it with a straight edge and make sure that there's no uh, damage on there as well. An easy way to check for the straight edge is to take a uh, ruler. Um, I only use this for straight edge checking. <laughs> it's a dollar or two dollar tool. Is it accurate? No, probably not. It's probably not perfectly flat. You can buy a straight edge, of course, uh, Amazon, eBay, yada, yada, yada. But again, there's my disclaimer. Um, what you want to do is put it across the edge. Uh, see, there's a little uh, tab sticking up uh, across the side. Right, so this part is down and there's a tab there. So what I do is I'll take the ruler and I'll stick it over there and look for any light uh, to come between the gap of the ruler and the direct drum. If you don't see any light, uh, you can assume that it's pretty straight. And uh, an easy way is to just uh, shine light back there. And you can see if I pull it away, obviously there's uh, some light coming through. But if I push it on there, there's, uh, if I can get it straight, there you go, nice and straight. There's no light coming through, so you could assume it's uh, straight enough for what I'm going to be doing uh, here. Again, it, it's just my uh, cheap way of doing it. I only use this ruler for straight edge checking, that's all. I keep it in the plastic thing and I keep it mounted on the side. Uh, is it super accurate? No. Is it good enough for what I'm trying to accomplish here? Yes. So again, to each his own. Also take notice, uh, these three marks right here, this is where the band is uh, riding, right? One, two, three marks. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not uh, grooved um, or there's any damage to those physical surfaces because that, of course, would be a bad thing. And you're probably not going to be able to uh, smooth that out. Again, looking for the fingernail length as that'll make the drum too thin and your band's not going to apply and yada, yada, yada. So, again, inspect on that. Uh, one thing to note, however, uh, this is a factory band. Uh, this is the band that we took out of our existing uh, unit. And one thing to note, but is the thickness uh, right here. Um, if we take our calipers, let's turn it on. And we measure the thickness of our band. You'll see that our factory one is about... Uh, what are we looking at there? About uh, 1.9 uh, plus or minus. All right, so we're looking at about 1.89 inches. But the problem comes in when we uh, put it onto here. You can see this is the uh, factory size one again at 1.89. Uh, look at the gap on the sides of it. Right, there's a gap here and there's also a gap here right where the drum 
uh, is physically going. Again, this drum is spinning like this, right? As it's moving in the transmission. And what happens when we kick in uh, second gear, right? This band, which usually sits, and then our servo is gonna uh, apply it, right? Make it squeeze. So it's gonna squeeze in tight with this thing rotating. So obviously this band squeezing in is gonna stop this uh, drum from rotating. Um, the problem comes in when the surface area that it's applying to is very small, right? Why didn't we have it uh, a band that comes out to the whole length of this, for example? Um, that'll give you more stopping force. Again, that's a tremendous amount of force that needs to be uh, done as this uh, drum is, is spinning around, right, to stop it. And what the aftermarket came out with uh, is a wider band, right, as it's called a wide band. Imagine that. Interesting name. Uh, this one's made by Alto, I believe. Um, but we could see if we look at dimensions of this one. This one actually comes in about uh, 2.3, 2.29. Right, so again, it's uh, much wider than our stock band. Here you can see the two uh, side by side. Right, this one's much wider. So now if we look at it, you can see as far as the stopping range, it's covering most of the drum. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't make it cover all the drum, but maybe it won't uh, physically fit, but I'm sure the engineers had a good reason. So, But again, it's covering uh, most of the drum apply uh, surface. Right, the gap here and here is much smaller than it was uh, with the thin drum. So this is a, a very good uh, upgrade. Again, a wide band, and of course it has a different uh, friction material in there. You always want to soak the band, of course, just like you would any other uh, friction clutch. Right, Soak it in your uh, transmission fluid before uh, building it. Hey, how about taking a second, like and subscribe, huh? Come on, show some love. When inspecting our drum, uh, you can resurface uh, this on a, a lathe or by sanding. Um, but again, the diameter is uh, very sensitive. You don't want to take uh, too much uh, off. So an easy way to measure this, um, if you have outside micrometers, uh, that might help. I don't have one that large. So what I just have is a simple tool like this. Uh, what you do is just turn this dial and that opens and closes uh, the feelers on the edge. Um, right, so I'm just taking this and going around to where it just uh, fits. And again, measuring across, finding the dimensions of it. Right, so I know it's about uh, this wide right here. Then you could simply take a caliper. Again, a long one. This one is uh, an eight inch caliper. And what you want to do is measure the gap uh, between here and here, of course. So let's see if I can do this. So let's see on the... You're looking at about uh, 6.183, uh, which is well... Uh, where it's supposed to. obviously it's just worn a little bit, but that's just uh, for your reference So we before we take apart our direct drum. I just want to talk a little bit about the clearances uh, We're gonna play uh, a lot of games uh, Trying to get this uh, clearance just right, but I want to point out what clearance I'm actually talking about since uh, This might be the first one for uh, some of us out there uh, This right here the uh, snap ring you can see it, that holds all of our clutches and uh, steels and the backing plate in. And this right here is the backing plate, right? So this is your snap ring and your backing plate. And what we're looking for is the gap in between snap ring and the uh, backing plate. So we're looking to measure right inside that little gap. And the way we're gonna do that is with our uh, feeler gauges. Uh, this is just a, a simple feeler gauge uh, tools. Uh, again, this is obviously Craftsman, yeah, fanboy, yada, yada, yada. Um, but what a lot of people don't uh, realize is you can combine uh, these uh, 
All right, so this one right here, the smallest is uh, five thousandths, and the largest goes up to what thirty thousandths. Uh, so let's say you're looking for something about uh, forty thousandths, for example. Well, what you can do is combine uh, two of these, or three of these, or whatever the case might be, um, just to uh, get a measurement. So here, for example, I'm using the twenty-three, and this one right here is the twenty-four. Um, so obviously, if I put them in the gap here. Again, between the snap ring and the backing plate. As you can see, that's what I'm doing right there. Right, so I'm just taking the 23, sliding it between our snap ring and our backing plate. And you can see it slides in there really easy. So obviously the gap is larger than that. And what you want to do is keep uh, moving up the scale until you find something that barely fits. Um, in this case, uh, if I combine the 23 and the 24. Again, just put them together as one. So now we have 23 plus 24 for the math majors out there is what? 47, right? So we have a 47,000th. And if I just push it in there, it's really snug, but it goes in. Again, it's not too snug. I'm not sure how to uh, describe it, but it does uh, fit into the hole. Right? Again, it does fit into the hole and it's really nice and snug. So we can assume the gap between those two is uh, 47,000. And what I like to do is work my way around in a circle, again, to make sure that it fits in in all places. Right? Just by moving my direct drum around in a circle, making sure that it fits in and that it's uh, nice and snug, but again, not uh, too snug. Okay. So in this case, our clearance from the factory was uh, 47. Of course, this is a uh, used drum, so there is some wear uh, in there already. Disassembly of our direct clutch. Uh, what we want to do is pull out the snap ring, uh, which is right here. And then we can take out our backing plate and all of our frictions and clutches. Easy way to do that is to just use a small screwdriver. I know, Craftsman, Fanboy, yada, yada, yada starting at the uh, intersection of the snap ring and here's the two sections right there just go in between just pry it back and then just go around and your snap ring should pop right out Like so. There's your snap ring. Notice that it is flat, so it is not uh, side selective. Now we want to take our backing plate out. Uh, just pry up on the corners. Try to do that without blocking our camera. And of course we have our backing plate. Uh, notice the beveled side uh, faces down into the drum. What we want to do is remove our frictions and steels. Tap it over, give it a good smack, uh, not killing it, of course, and that uh, will remove everything for us. We have one friction, one steel, two frictions, two steels, three frictions, three steels, four frictions, four steels, five frictions, five steels, six frictions, and of course, uh, six steels. That leaves us here with our direct drum. And the next step, what we want to do is remove our spring uh, retainer. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, obviously that's held in with a snap ring, which you can hopefully see right here. It goes all the way around. Uh, so what we have to do is push down on this uh, spring uh, right here. Hey, how about taking a second like and subscribe, huh? Come on, show some love. To get the uh, spring retainer out, right, we have to remove the uh, C-clip. There's a couple different ways you can do it. I'll show you this way. This is just using a uh, C-clamp, right, where you're putting uh, 180 degrees apart from each other. Um, and I just have the back mounted there, as you can see. Uh, just using my standard two by six, um, 
one C-clamp on this side, one C-clamp on that side. That's a six inch uh, C-clamp. So again, that's one way to get those uh, out of there. So again, that's one way to do it with the C-clamps. I like to use uh, this tool. Uh, it's much better, the uh, direct clutch, uh, well, I guess you just call it a clutch uh, spring compressor. Uh, works uh, a lot better. Again, you can find them on uh, eBay or Amazon. It's a little more costly, but uh, we use this one for the uh, forward drum as well. And we're gonna go ahead and use it for the uh, direct clutch. Uh, direct drum. I like it because uh, these pieces right here, uh, it's more surface area, so it's less chance to uh, damage the center ring uh, of the spring retainer. But again, to each his own. Just like we saw with the uh, forward uh, drum when we removed it, we're going to take this piece right here and put it into the snap ring uh, groove on one side. Fit that over there. And then we'll take our other half of the tool, fit that one also into our snap ring groove. There you can see, it's in snap groove, ring groove number one and number two. Then we'll align up Rotate it around so you can see it a little bit better. And then all we're doing is turning the handle on the top, pushing down our tool, which is gonna compress our spring retainer. Once you get it down there, uh, notice right here is our uh, snap ring, uh, the grooves where we're gonna be pinching, but it's in the way of our uh, tool right here. So what we're gonna do is move this around. Again, just take a small screwdriver and you can slide the opening of the snap ring uh, over to the side. Make it a little bit easier for you to get your uh, snap ring pliers onto there. Again, to uh, make the squeeze. Uh, just a little trick for you. To get in there, I like to use uh, this pair of snap ring pliers. Again, it's kind of a bent at a 90 degree angle. And you'll notice it has little nubs on the end and a very thin uh, tip. This tip uh, right here is very thin. Uh, again, just makes it really convenient to uh, get in there. See if we can see that. I'm just bringing my pliers in, sitting them into that little groove. Uh, the snap ring groove itself is right here, right? Here's the edge of my snap ring on both sides. Uh, this little groove right here, the tips, this little tip fits into that groove, which makes it really easy to come out on. Again, do you need to use this particular tool? Absolutely, positively not. You could use regular snap ring pliers, but again, this just makes it uh, super easy to work with as such. Uh, comes right out. Now that I've taken the snap ring off, uh, all I'm going to do is of course unscrew and the whole assembly is going to uh, loosen up our, our spring retainer. Again, I'm just unscrewing and of course our spring retainer is loosening up and is no longer fastened in. I'll just squeeze in these two ends and pull our clutch tool. Now that we've got our snap ring uh, removed from here, all we have to do is take out our spring retainer. Uh, notice that this one is full of springs. There's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, uh, 16 springs. Uh, again, this came out of a Monte uh, Carlo SS. I forgot if it was a CZ or a CQ one, um, but that's why it's full of the springs. If it came out of a different model, a low performance model, uh, it won't have as many. I think it will have 12 uh, from memory. So again, you might want to uh, consider adding more of the springs uh, for a more uh, consistent uh, push down, I guess you could say, of the 
uh, piston. Also underneath that, you have the uh, spring guide. Go ahead and keep those together. And lastly, underneath, we have our uh, apply piston as well as the uh, guide down there. So what we want to do is remove those as well. Give it a shake. Uh, make sure that this uh, check ball, you can kind of see it in there, uh, has free uh, movement. And again, what we'll do is go ahead and uh, replace our seals here. There's also a check ball here in the housing. So you can see that uh, right down there also. What you want to do is shake that. Make sure that it's uh, loose and moving. Hopefully you can hear that. Uh, this one's nice and uh, free. And of course, uh, we're going to replace our bushings. Uh, you can see one right there. Give it a quick uh, inspection. This one has uh, little scratches in it, but nothing major. Probably could uh, reuse it, but I won't. And there's also one uh, right here as well. Another bushing. Again, that one also appears to be in... Uh, good condition but we'll replace that as well always try and replace uh, all the bushings uh, since they are critical of course for this particular transmission and transmissions in general next up I've taken the uh, direct drum mounted it here in the vise uh, along with uh, rubber piece here and of course a rubber piece there uh, we don't want to just put our drum into a vise and squeeze it and scratch it uh, that would be a bad thing. What we're going to do is uh, sand and try and take off this uh, glaze. Again, we're not sanding it to uh, remove surface. That would be a bad thing. Uh, we're just sanding to remove uh, the glaze. What I'm going to use is uh, this Harbor Freight Roll. Uh, it's 240 grit. Um, ideally, use 300, 400. That's uh, probably better. But uh, again, roll with what you got. I'm using uh, 240 and I'm just going to be uh, lightly wet sanding uh, with the uh, transmission fluid and the 240 grit. Again with the drum uh, mounted in there, all I'm going to do is take my sandpaper roll, find a good length, take that, just cut a piece off. After you cut a piece off, go ahead and uh, Dunk it in some tranny fluid. What we want to do is uh, wet sand. Do not, I repeat, do not uh, want to be doing this uh, dry. Uh, that would be a very, 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 can I quote some more, very bad uh, thing to do. I also like to coat my drum uh, with some uh, tranny fluid. Again, I cannot emphasize enough to do this. Uh, you don't want to do it on a dry drum or with dry uh, sandpaper. Again, we're not looking to take off material, but rather we're looking to uh, just take off the glaze. Then again, what you want to do, take your uh, sandpaper, wrap it around your uh, drum. like so. Again, this is just 240 grit Harbor Freight Roll. Go ahead and take it and rotate it around. And again, repeat your process. And just keep uh, repeating the process until most all of that uh, glaze and the markings are removed. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but is it uh, much better than it was? 
absolutely. So at least you'll get a better uh, grip now. And we're just wiping off the surface and you could see uh, much better than it was. Could we go a little more? Yeah, you probably could. But again, I think the main purpose was to remove the glaze. And I think uh, we've accomplished that. And again, I don't want to go uh, too much. In the worst case, you're removing material or a lot of material. And that, of course, would be a bad thing. We just want to remove the glaze. Hey, how about taking a second, like and subscribe, huh? Come on, show some love. Let's go ahead and remove our bushings. Uh, again, there's one here, and there's one also right here. Uh, to remove this one, right here, we're gonna push it out uh, in this direction. All I'm using here is a couple uh, pieces of wood, only because uh, that particular bushing, as you can see, is mounted uh, flush. Right, it's mounted there, so if I put something here and pound it, obviously the bushing would hit it, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to put the bushing in between these two pieces of wood, like so. Then what I'm going to do is use uh, this bushing uh, removal tool. Uh, you could probably use a chisel or something, just uh, don't scratch it. And of course my little uh, mini sledgehammer thing. Uh, what I'm doing is coming in here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm trying to catch it on the inside of the bushing. So again, if this is your bushing, I'm trying to catch it on the inside. Right, so I'm catching it on the inside here, and I'm hitting it so it's coming out towards the camera, right? I'm hitting in this direction. That's all I'm going to do. Now that I've got it placed, push my tool so that it's on the inside of that bushing. And without hitting our camera, And as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, we dropped our till, um, but the bushing has indeed uh, come out. And of course, uh, no scratches, so we should be fine. Again, we'll go ahead and press the new one in. Now to get this other one out, uh, we're gonna push it in this direction. To get that bushing out of there, what I'm going to use is of course, our uh, eBay bushing seal driver removal tool. I'm using a 47 millimeter on the top and I'm using a 44 millimeter on the bottom. And all I'm going to do is smack down. Make sure I'm nice and centered on that bushing. Go ahead and grab my mini sledge and whack away. And you can see, uh, she's removed, no problem whatsoever. When you're working with the bushing removal, uh, one little tip, uh, whenever you get like a little scratch or something right here, just use a little emery paper uh, and get rid of the scratch. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want anything sticking up for a fingernail. Again, that would come from using uh, this tool right when we were punching out. You might accidentally nick it. So again, just grab some emery paper or some very soft uh, sandpaper and sand around there to remove any pieces that are sticking up that would interfere with the new bushing going in. After you get your bushings removed, what you want to do is inspect inside here. These are where the rings for the uh, center support are riding. Again, this right here is a bushing surface. So you want to make sure that it's uh, Nice and smooth, of course. On the other side also is a bushing surface, right? Where we removed it, make sure it's uh, smooth. But right here, you can see, uh, this is where the three rings ride. Here's ring number one, number two, and number three. Um, those are iron rings, just like on an engine, right? Where you have uh, piston rings riding uh, up and down, except this case, of course, the rings are in that direction. So you wanna make sure that there's no uh, grooves or no damage there. We just have some glazing marks, uh, nothing really to uh, worry about. But again, if you have some grooves where you could feel it with a fingernail, um, probably the end of life has happened to your direct drum and it's not going to be any good. Here's our center support. 
these are the three rings and ring one ring two and ring uh, three so again these iron rings are what fits inside of our uh, direct drum of course it goes together like so and those three rings ride on that surface so again uh, we don't uh, want to see any damage but they are iron uh, rings and that's where the damage would come from and a little upgrade uh, when we're pushing our bushings uh, back in uh, we can use a front pump uh, bushing notice this one right here that's uh, white so it's uh, teflon coated versus this is our stock uh, direct drum bushing uh, it's a nice little upgrade it's a little bit uh, wider if we measure that you can see it's just about uh, 14 millimeters in thickness versus our stock one which is 13 millimeters so yeah, it's minor. It's a one millimeter um, extra surface for the uh, center support, I guess, to uh, ride on. But again, it is the uh, Teflon surface and it is the same uh, diameter. So is it necessary? No. Again, it's just something that I do. So you can call it uh, just a preference. But again, a front pump uh, Teflon bushing instead of the uh, standard stock uh, bushing. And the reason I like to install that front pump bushing uh, is because the length of this surface uh, right here where the bushing uh, installs into is just about uh, 14 millimeters so again might as well cover the uh, entire surface with bushing material this way it gives uh, more space to uh, support the center support to drive our bushing back in I'm just going to use a 44 for the inside and I'm going to use a 52 for the outside, since a 52 seems to fit uh, just right on the outside. We'll press it just about flush. To press my bushings in, I'm just using this T-Ton Arbor Press. Again, I like to press bushings in. Uh, you could use a hammer and of course our bushing re uh, sealing setting tools if you want to. But again, I try not to do that. And here I'm using a 52 and a 44, just mounted on this little thing. And of course our bushing fits inside uh, like a glove. All you wanna do is place your bushing where it goes. Make sure the bushing seats nicely. Put our driver on top, bring the anvil down, make sure she's nice and centered and go ahead and press her home. You can see she's flush with the end. What I wanna point out here is the fact again that uh, bushing was one millimeter longer i hope you can see inside here uh, you can see right here where the bushing surface and the bushing itself meet it's just about uh, flush here on the bottom right the bushing surface and right here where the bushing and the bushing uh, surface meet and the same thing on the top. On the top here, you can see it's flush across. So again, it's a one millimeter difference, but it fills up the whole bushing cavity. Is that the right word? So again, is it mandatory that you do that? No. In other words, using a front pump bushing instead of the direct pump bushing. Is it a good option? Yeah, I think it is personally, but mandatory, no. But again, a good option, yes, so why not? Next, we're gonna take our large bushing and push it into the top surface of our direct drum. Here you could see a 54 uh, fits nicely inside of there. If I had a 54 and a half, it would be even better, but I don't. And just something bigger than a 60. So I'm using a 62 in this case, uh, because again, I want it to sit flush. And so hit this piece of metal. So I'm going to use a 62 and a 54 in my case. Assemble them together. 
And by the way, you always want to lube up your uh, bushing and the hole you're putting your bushing into before pressing them. It's always a good habit. Seat your bushing on there nice and square. And let's go ahead and press this one home as well. Go ahead and press her. As you can see, our bushing is nicely pressed in. So now we're good to go to rebuild it. After you get your bushings installed, it's a good idea to uh, fit it onto your center support and make sure that there's nothing uh, installed incorrectly. Right? Again, bushing on the bottom, bushing on the top, just fits right on top of there. Slow and gently. Make sure she's lubed up nicely. Both sides. Again, never want to do anything dry. And just very carefully fit her on there. Very carefully fit her on and just give it a spin. And you can see there's no binding, so all seems well.